True Believers, it's your old pal Spider-Man. Good morning and happy Saturday to the cadre. Um, let's see, we are doing alphabet shaves um, and we are on M. So I am using Mama Bear's Dragon's Blood. And because I've got the Dragon's Blood, I've kind of got a whole dragon theme going on today. Um, but let's get into this. So I've been pre-soaking my brush, even though it's a synthetic and I don't really need to, uh, but I'm using my Oz shaving uh, polychrome brush. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a uh, frog in my throat. Um, but I thought this side with the uh, with a lot of the reds and the blacks looked uh, pretty dragony, so um, that's what I'm using today. Um, now I was blooming the uh, the puck. So you can see it's a little off color as it's been soaking in some of the water. So uh, I dripped the water into my lather bowl, which I won't be using because I face lather primarily. Um, but I put the bloom water in there in case I need to go back for extra water, which I will. Um, I'll just go right to the bloom water and still utilize some of the soap that ends up dissolving into the bloom water. Um, so, um, as you know, you may have heard, um, <clears throat> a few months back we lost, um, Susan Smith, uh, who was the maker of Honeybee Soaps, um, one of the original three Sues, as we called them, the original soap makers, uh, some of the original, uh, soap making artisans, and three of them happened to be named Sue, um, and actually there was actually another one that was named Sue, uh, and she was Lil Sue from Susie Bubbles. Um, but she only made soap for a few years and I actually never got a chance to try any of her soaps. Um, but at any rate, uh, we recently lost um, <clears throat> Susan Smith who made Honeybee Soaps. And uh, as you know, uh, several years back we lost Sue Moore who made um, St. Charles Shave Soaps. But her daughter, Wendy, picked up her mantle after she left and continued to make the soaps. Well, Wendy, a week ago, just announced that um, the, the true passion in the um, soap making, you know, was with her mother and she needed time for her family. Um, so she was closing the business. Um, so now of the three Sues, um, the only one that we have left is uh, Mama Bear, uh, Mama Sue. So it's kind of just the way the times are. We've got lots and lots of new artisans and sometimes the older artisans just get shuffled to the back and people forget about them and don't recommend them a lot. And so the newer people that come up don't even hear about them and don't get a chance to try them, uh, which is a shame because, uh, you know, even though soaps have changed a lot and, um, for the most part gotten a lot better, um, those original artisans still produced great soaps. Um, so that's kind of why I'm highlighting Mama Bear soaps today. It's a glycerin, uh, melt and pour soap, <clears throat> which a lot of people don't like. Um, but it works really well. Uh, so for my razor today, um, I bought two razors from uh, Chris C.B. Lindsay uh, during the TSC yard sale. Um, and one of them was my Punk Tall. Uh, where did I put it? That's not it. Uh, I forget where I set it down because my counter is a mess. But my Punk Tall razor, um, which... Um, he said it was way too light, didn't like it. Um, it was super light. It's the lightest razor that I own. And it came in this case, but I don't know if it's an original case because the case says something different on it um, than what is actually on the razor. So it might be a Franken razor. It might be something, where is that razor? It's probably just underneath one of my tubs of soap. Or I left it out there when I took a picture yesterday. That's what I did. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I got two razors from him. Uh, this one is in a La Reche box, um, and the covering of the box is kind of a, uh, faux, uh, 
<clears throat> alligator skin or reptile print. Um, and I thought the uh, workings on the, or the detail that was on the handle was sort of scale-ish. So I decided to use this one for today's shave. Uh, it happens to be a slant, if you can see that. Um, I don't actually know if I've used this one yet or not, so I'm not sure how it's gonna go. But the punk tall that I got from him, I absolutely love. Um, very mild, very light. Uh, I can see why most people would not like it. Um, it is just, it's, it's literally the lightest razor that I own. And probably lighter than any plastic razor I even have. It's, it's got to be all aluminum. But I just love it. Um, this razor right now is feeling fairly aggressive. Um, but if, I'm taking my time with it because I'm not used to using slants. And the last time I used a slant didn't go so well. So just trying to be a little cautious with it. Um, no need to get too fast and too aggressive and end up cutting myself. Alright, <clears throat> first pass down. Uh, so, right now, uh, the Air Force Base is doing an air show. Um, and I took the kids to the show last night. So, the, the public show is Saturday and Sunday. And it's basically the same show every day, or both days. Um, but... I forgot to turn this light on, <clears throat> which might help with some of that focusing that I see going on. Anyways, um, last night they did a smaller show of only five acts, <clears throat> and um, it was just for military, just for their families. Um, so anybody that already had access to get on to base and uh, not a public show. Um, now, obviously, if you're off base and you can see it, it's not like it's not for you to watch, but um, only people allowed on base, on the flight line to watch it front row were military. And so uh, we went and watched that, which was really, really interesting. Um, the show didn't start until 8.30 p.m. Um, and it was probably the first time I've ever seen an air show at night. Um, really interesting. There was like a MiG-17. Um, it takes off with full afterburners and really just looks like a rocket taking off because you see the afterburner and you see the tube-shaped uh, MiG. Uh, just really cool. Um, and then the, the aerial demonstrations... Um, they all had like lights on them, special lights, um, which made them really cool to watch at night. And then the, uh, Golden Knights skydiving team from the army came out, you know, they had their little like sparkler cans or whatever they wear on their feet. So you could trace them all the way through the sky coming down. Um, just a really neat way to watch an air show. And the weather last night was perfect. It was in the mid 70s. There was quite a bit of breeze, which did make it feel a little cool, but uh, overall a great night to watch an air show. And it only lasted about um, not quite an hour and a half. Um, so it's just a real quick in and out, watch a few things and you know don't have to worry about the air show taking up the full day. So I don't think we're gonna go at all um, today or tomorrow. Um, my kids aren't really into the air shows like I am, um, and I don't want to take them there and have them be bored, so. Um, I'd like to see the F-22s. That's like the big draw this year, is the F-22 demonstration team. I saw them practicing uh, yesterday uh, after work. 
Um, really cool doing like a little slow flight thing where they just kind of hover like this and just move very, very slowly across the sky like that using their uh, like thrust vectoring and stuff. That's really awesome. Uh, so I did get to see him do that. You can tell it was third pass. It's getting a little close, a little aggressive. Just need to lessen up my pressure a little bit, kind of go a little bit slower. As I mentioned my kids, um, it's summer break right now. Um, one of my sons is in summer school, just taking an extra credit so that he doesn't have to. That's one less class he has to take during the school year and can, you know, fill up his time with more fun electives and things like that. Um, and then my daughter, see what I'm doing here, um, is doing a assistant teaching thing. She's in high school, but uh, she's kind of helping out a teacher during summer school. And that in turn, they can get um, some credits that they can use for college. Uh, they call it the A plus program. Don't know all the details, but anyways, um, as you know, I'm divorced and don't get my kids all the time, but during the summer, I do get them uh, for a couple weeks. So this weekend starts my two weeks that I've got with the kids, and then I'll have another two weeks next month. Um, so while they're in summer school, I'll go to work. And then, uh, when I go, ah, dropping stuff. Uh, when I go to pick them up, then we'll have the rest of the day because they only, uh, only go for half a day, half a day for summer school, at least for these classes. And, uh, I'll have some fun after that. Planning on going to the lake again. I remember talking, me talking about doing, going to the lake. I did my outdoor shave last year from the lake. <clears throat> All right, so as tradition, finish up with some witch hazel. And not necessarily a matching scent, but a matching theme. We're going to use Dragon Noir. Kind of has a weird, skunky vibe to it. But um, I kind of always liked smelling skunk on the side of the road. Um, there's just something about it. I mean, yeah, it's pungent and it's strong, but there was something about it like that I always kind of dug, and that this kind of smells like a cologne that's a little bit skunky. Um, I think the skunkiness comes out at the beginning, and then it dies down, and it's and it's more cologne-y. But um, never a huge fan of this, but always like digging it out every now and then and using it. So Dragon Noir. Use my sort of, um, and I don't know if this is a Franken razor either because the um, uh, it was in a Loresh box. The head, the base doesn't say anything about Loresh. There are some letters on the bottom of this. It says DR, looks like GM, um, and then there's a script on the bottom of the um, not the ball end, but just the end 
Um, and it's sort of worn off, so I can't tell exactly what it says, but it looks like either T-L-S-E-N or J-L-S-E-N. Um, so it's a little script and the, the side of that first letter is just a little bit worn off. So this could be a total Franken razor too, I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, that's my shave for today. I um, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, since I've got the kids and I won't be working as much, um, I'll have m much more time to do more of these videos. Um, I do have a really, really uh, special, I guess, uh, razor set up for tomorrow. Um, kind of one that I've been neglecting and been meaning to get to and need to get to and want to get to um, for tomorrow's shave. So um, stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll see you guys on the cut day. Later.